the stem line. I'm Coach Bree. Um, I don't know if you guys heard me sing that beautiful song, but um, today we're going to be talking about, guess what? Hearts. Yes, that's right, you guys. We're going to be talking about hearts. Um, the reason why we're going to be talking about hearts is because here at Excite All Stars, we're really big on fitness and health. Um, so I just want to give you guys some pointers on your heart and what you should know about it, what your parents should know about your heart, whether it's your heart rate, cholesterol, things like that. So today we're going to learn the science behind the one and only heart. Hope you guys are ready because you guys are in for a treat. So right here, I have my beautiful coloring sheet that I worked so hard on. I don't know if you guys can see this, but here's some really important things that you guys should know. So there are four chambers to the heart. So there are the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. And a good way to remember what order they go in is alphabetical. The atrium is always going to be at the top. The ventricle is going to be at the bottom. Now, right side versus the left side. As you guys can see in this picture, the left side is kind of smaller. And the reason for that is because it's going to the lungs. So as you guys can see, the pulmonary artery is going out to the lungs and out to the lungs. But then the right side is much bigger. And that's because it has to pump to your entire body. That is a lot of ground to cover for such a small organ because the size of your heart is actually the size of your fist. And it's right here on the left side of your chest. So your right side is going to be pumping to your whole body. So it has to have a thicker mus muscle wall in order for that to happen. So your aorta is that big important artery that's going out to pump blood to your whole body, right? So it's bigger, it's thicker just for that sole purpose. Now, the reason why I have some color on here is to get you guys to understand why the body's, how the body pumps its blood to get oxygen rich or lose the oxygen. So as you guys take a deep breath in, you're filling up your lungs, your lungs are inflating, your heart is still beeping, uh, yeah, it's still beating, not beeping, sorry. It's because at this moment, as I breathe in the oxygen, the oxygen is, is going into my lungs and it's feeding my red blood cells, right? And that oxygen is turning my blood cells red. So that means the red color is oxygen rich, okay? Now the blue, when you think about somebody not having oxygen, they usually say that they're blue in the face because they're choking or something like that. Same thing here with the heart. The blue is not oxygen rich. It does not have a whole lot of oxygen in it. That is why it is going to the lungs to get it. The oxygen rich is going to the body because your body needs the oxygen to feed your cells and everything else so you can run, so you can go laugh, you can do whatever you need to do, even eat. But that oxygen lacking blood is going to your lungs to go and get oxygen that it needs. So. Another thing we're gonna cover today is how to, you know, check your pulse. And a lot of people probably don't think like, what do I need to check my pulse for? I'm, I'm alive, right? Well, it's probably a good thing to monitor your pulse, especially if you're getting older, or if you're an athlete, or if you have some underlying medical issues, because checking your pulse daily, or even once a week, can be a big important factor. It could be a life or death situation for most or unless you have an at-home uh, where you can check your own pulse with the uh, assistive uh, device. But if you don't have those things, you can simply just use two fingers or you can use our marshmallows and toothpicks or you can make your own stethoscope with simply a funnel and a toilet paper or a paper towel roll. You just have to put the two together Put it up to somebody's chest and put your ear to it and you should hear the thump thump thumping away that boom 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 bass going on in your chest so um this one's pretty straightforward but i'm going to show you guys the marshmallow trick which i recently learned myself and i thought it was pretty interesting so first this is really good if you like marshmallows i'm not a big fan of marshmallows so i'm not going to eat mine after but if you guys like marshmallows go for it 
Um, typically use a normal size marshmallow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear my marshmallow in half. Yep, just like that. Mm, mm -mm. That that's not it for me, guys. I don't really I don't like marshmallows. They're such such a weird thing. But they can have a healthier purpose than for me eating it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick this lovely toothpick in my marshmallow. Not too far down. You don't want it to poke out through the end. You don't want it to poke your skin. And I'm just gonna simply set it on my wrist like this. And what I'm looking for is for the toothpick to move up and down on my radial pulse. Radial as in this is on my uh, radial artery right here. So as I set it down, you should be able to see the toothpick move. And you'll be able to count that. And the way you can count how many times your heart beats per minute or BPM is by counting how many beats for 15 seconds, then multiplying that by four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna use this um, particular method to count my heart rate today, but I will do a radial pulse with my two fingers. So all you need is your pointer finger and your middle finger. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it and you're gonna kind of put it, you're gonna follow your thumb all the way down so about right here to your wrist and you're gonna press down not too hard but just enough to where you can actually feel it and sometimes you might have to feel around for it so let's see there it is it's very soft in your wrist so you just have to be calm quiet and you just have to feel it sometimes i close my eyes you count for 15 seconds or if you have a phone or egg timer, you just start your timer and start counting, right? So I'm gonna start my timer. Oh, I went over the time. So, I went over the time, so it was 20 seconds, and I got to 30, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go to my calculator. I'm not very good at math, you guys. I know I'm a STEM teacher, but math is not my best friend, but it is important. So I got to about 30 at 20 seconds, and I'm gonna multiply that by four. That's 120, that's for 20 seconds. Now let's say if I said, 20, I said 30 for my last one. So let's say I was 15 at 15 seconds times four, that's 60. So, so the normal beat per minute should be somewhere between 60 and 100 beats per minute, right? So because I went over the 15 seconds, mine was 120, plus I'm also talking, so I'm gonna have a little bit of an elevated heart rate but your resting heart rate should be somewhere between 60 and 100 beats per minute, right? So, so you're probably wondering, well, if Excite All Stars are big on athletes or being athletic, what if my heart rate is a little bit lower than most? Should I be concerned? You should not be concerned because if you are an athlete, that means you're gonna have, typically gonna have a lower BPM because your heart rate, your heart is used to working in overdrive. So your heart knows how to be a little bit more calmer and pump blood a little bit easier for you because you're always exhausting it, if that makes sense. But athletes sometimes can have as low as 40 beats per minute, right? And that's really good. They're very calm. They, that just very calming resting heart rate for athletes. That's something that they need because their body usually it's going overdrive more than normal. So they need to have that calmer heartbeat to you know, help their heart reach a level of calmness or to get back to its original self. So if you are a regular child, then if you go outside and play often, or if you don't, it should still be somewhere between 60 and 100 BPMs. There are other ways you can also check your heart rates. So you can also check your carotid which is in your neck. This one is also pretty simple, fine and easier to find than your wrist. So all you have to do is take your two fingers once again. I like to start by the corner, the ear and the corner of my jawline right here. And I follow it down 
and then you have to stop talking and it's right there and you can count that one you can really feel that one because that this is a really big artery right here for us so uh, that's why it's very important to be careful around your neck because you have a very major artery in your neck. So you can press down, you don't wanna press too hard, it gets a little uncomfortable, but if you just slightly press and count that one for 15 seconds, you should get the same result. You can also check your top of your foot um, as well as your thigh or the groin area. So I'm not gonna show you those two because for one, I have on my beautiful minion slippers and two, the thigh and growing one is a little bit more, um, I guess a little bit more, it's, it's more of use for medical purposes if really, if doctors are having a hard time to find your pulse. But if you're alive and well and you're checking your own pulse, you can just simply do your carotid or your radial or your neck and your wrist, right? So now I'm gonna let you guys go on a break. You guys can go outside, have fun. And then once you guys come back, I'm going to show you guys some things you guys can do to test out your working heartbeat to see how fast that's going versus your resting heartbeat. See you when you come back. <laughs> Whew, I just did like a thousand and one jumping jacks, you guys. I'm really tired. No, I'm just kidding. I actually just did like five of them. But I actually now wanna test my heart rates. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to count, you guys. Oh wow, it's, it's really thumping. And now we're back, you guys. We are back. We are, we are, our blood is pumping and we are ready to start our experiment. I hope you guys had a great break. I just did, my heart is racing. I love it, it feels great. And now we're gonna and now I'm going to show you guys how you guys can get a better idea of how the heart works, right? So all you're gonna need is a few simple things. Some water bottles. It doesn't have to be this particular type of water bottle, it can be any size you have. Um, some straws, the bottle caps, some water, some food coloring, and with an adult supervision or with the adult's help. You're gonna either need a screwdriver or like a box cutter, things of that nature. And if you tuned in last week, you will still have some leftover Play-Doh, right? So our Play-Doh is still good. If not, you might have some other type of Play-Doh or you can use some tape. So let's get started, guys. So first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our beautiful bottles, empty out the water, make sure that they're empty. You're gonna need about three. Right? So I have three water bottles right here. Okay. And then I'm gonna also have their caps. So two of the caps, you're gonna poke holes into. So I kinda already started. So as you guys can see, I have some nice big holes that I used a screwdriver to make. Make sure they're big enough to fit the straws in. Just like this, like so. And then you're gonna need probably about you know, four straws that you're gonna need. And so what I'm gonna show you guys is that this is going to be basically the lungs, the atrium, and the ventricle, right? So what I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna fill up my water bottles with water, with some red food coloring water. I'm just gonna add a couple red food coloring. Oh wow, it's almost time for us to get some more food coloring. So I add a few drops into this bottle. And then I'm gonna add a few drops into this bottle. Beautiful. And now I'm gonna pour a little water. Hopefully I don't make a mess. And you're gonna fill it up about halfway. There you go. You're only gonna fill up two of the bottles. There's the mess. Now this one you don't have to fill up all the way because what's gonna end up happening is it's gonna end up pumping out, right? So this is our main 
bottle right here. This is the one that we really want to focus on. So I'm going to screw on the first one that can fit the two straws. Make sure your lids are all tight. There we go. So I'm going to add my first straw like so. And then I'm going to add the second straw. Oops, got my other water top. There we go. And I'm going to stick my straws down into them like so. Okay. There we go. Now this might be kind of tricky because straws can be a little bit bigger than most, but hopefully it'll work. So I just kind of bent this straw into the other straw so it can fit. You can use some tape to make sure it's secure. Then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to set this one in here. So as I mentioned before, you have four chambers of the heart. And the names of the, the two the names of the chambers are the atrium and the ventricle. So I'm just going to show you guys how the left side of the heart works. So in this instance, we have an atrium and we have a ventricle, correct? So this is going to act like our lungs. So what's going to happen is our lungs have oxygen. I mean, our atrium and our, in our, our left atrium and our left ventricle, they both have oxygen rich right now, right? So as you guys can see, the oxygen rich is coming through right here from the left lung is going in, it's pumping back out, right? And it's gonna go into the AOR into the rest of the body. So once I squeeze my atrium, it's gonna pump. Oh, let's see if it'll do it. You might have to squeeze really, really hard, guys. As you guys just saw, I had some of my blood come out, but it's okay. That's what we have the Play-Doh for. I'm just going to take some of this Play-Doh and I'm going to mold it around my straws like so. There we go. Or if you have clay, you can use clay as well. But as you guys can see, by me squeezing this this atrium you guys are able to see how the blood is pumping through the heart right you have to squeeze a little hard you want to have paper towels on standby once again paper towels are very important so you just squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and bum ba dum ba bum ba dum bum bass. Got the super bass. Boom ba dum bum bum ba dum bum bass. And this is basically how your heart pumps blood within itself and then to the rest of the body or to the lungs in this, in, in this instance. So there it is, guys. Here is your heart model. You guys are able to see how to build your own heart model to see how it pumps blood to the lungs, to the rest of the body, and how it circulates through itself of course so you have your atrium your ventricle and you have your lungs or it could be the rest of the body and you can also change the colors you can add in your blue your blue food coloring to show the uh oxygen lacking red blood cells or you can just leave it as a red you can do um another set of three water bottles to do the other side of the heart however you choose to do it is perfectly fine there are other ways and other styles of heart models you guys can try at home and it's very simple all you need is a few things like a water bottle and some straws and you guys are good to go so hopefully this was informative um, i'm gonna add some more links down at the bottom so you guys can see some of the other ways to make your own heart model and if you guys have any more questions feel free to ask and i hope you guys have a boom 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 heartly felt day <laughs> See you guys next week. We'll be talking about lungs. Bye.